And I would like to read a poem that's partly inspired, that's partly love and inspirational called Wishing a Lovely Day. And here it goes. Wishing you a happy day, one that brings you many smiles, in all sorts of ways, make it a day that is worthwhile. Keep your head up and don't look back. Keep moving forward and keep on rising. Go out and into that fast track. Keep on smiling. Keep on smiling. Know that I'm here in your life, and I love you in so many ways. I'll keep you happy, never in strife, wishing you a lovely day. Now, um, when you read that, you know, it's not only a love poem, it also could be an inspirational poem, because we go through a lot in life. You know, many of us, we don't always have our good days, we have our bad days. You know, some of us have bad days at work, some of us lose family members. Some of us are stupid enough to spend a dollar fifty on the deal and use it. So want to slap themselves in the hand and get ready because it's forty pages of garbage. However, if you have a friend in need suffering from anxiety, or if you have someone that don't believe in love, that's a great poem for anybody to read. If you ask me, you know, it's very universal. That's why I wrote it, and that's why I included it in my book as well. And if I ever write an inspirational book. You will bet your ass this will be included also. <laughs> so, um, my next poem I want to read to y'all is um, my very first um, poem I, I put in this book and also my own. Um, I always say that this is my very first YouTube video I put called Beauty, but it actually was my second because the first video was just a random video of the Macy's 4th of July fireworks, <laughs> which is also beautiful in itself. If only if I knew I could have wrote a poem based on it then and read it to be more spectacular. Oh, look at these beautiful fireworks in <laughs> red, white, and blue, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> anyway, let me read this book, this one to y'all. It's called Beauty, of course. And here it goes. Beauty is you day by day, special in your own way, from head to toe, unlike anyone I know. The way you talk, the way you walk, your smile brightens up my day. Beautiful in every way. Your beauty is all there. Beautiful curves make me stop and stare. I don't feel this way about anyone but you. To me, you're fine and beautiful. Beauty is you day by day. That's what I always say. I'm glad I finally won your heart. Beauty is what you are. And that was my first poem. And um, let me see if I can read some more stuff from my new book, Journey to the Heart. If I don't find anything, no, that's not it. Oh, yes. When I was 15 or 16, I didn't know what type of woman I liked. I really was trying to go after anybody I wanted to, but, you know, I felt like I was not confident enough. I had a unibrow. People compare when you were brought to a bird from Sesame Street or the McDonald's sign, which, you know, traumatized me so much, I'm surprised I never became hateful of McDonald's or Bert. I actually make, I actually make him a change of Bert anyway, and I actually like Bert because of that human brown. And because of things they say about him and Lerny, but that's another story for later. Read about it online, but... <laughs> when I was 15 or 16, I started liking, you know, curvier beautiful woman because I feel like, you know, at the time, you know, now in this era, everybody loves BBWs or actually, you know, big, beautiful women. I mean, you've seen people like Ashley Graham on the cover of Sports Illustrated in the, in the 90s. That wouldn't have even been possible. I mean, there was no such thing as full-figure women singing up there other than Aretha Franklin. So, and now you got Queen Latifah out there, you got Jennifer Hudson. Well, she's not full-figured anymore, so that's not even at her Beyonce, so you know, and they kick ass on stage, and this partly inspired me to write this poem, which is going to be featured in my new book, um, Journey to Finding Love, called Curvaceous Woman, and here it goes. What you call fat, I call curvaceous, more to love than thick in the right places. They hold such big personalities, God created thick women accordingly, thick thighs that mesmerize. Curves that hypnotize, think of the waist and ass all over the place. Most thick women are never insecure. They know us men love them for sure. For us, a skinny woman never does the trick. 
We get turned on by a woman that's thick. There's no use in fact shaming. The negativity that you're aiming, they'll laugh and laugh at your bony ass. Some of them will even steal your man. And that's it for that one. <laughs> oh, we like that also. I think that was supposed to be our last verse tonight, but given that um, there is a reading again, if not, I'm going to have to just go on to the next one. <laughs> Well, three poems, different, you know, different wording called love. But this one, I like the most because this is the one I wrote when I was about in high school at 17. And, you know, I was dabbling in poetry for a long time. But, you know, until this year, I was afraid to share my poems to anybody, really. Like, until recently, when I released my YouTube channel, nobody even knew I wrote poems. Because, you know, I felt like I was too shy still to, you know, bring myself out to the world, you know. And I just started going to open mic events five months ago. So I want to have more connection with everybody with a brand new audience. And you know something that feels exhilarating, why not? And this particular one was before that time. It's called Love, of course. And this is what I wrote when I was 16 and really knew nothing about love. My thoughts of it. Here it goes. Love is like falling from the sky. It can open up a world of everlasting passion. When you fall in love, it is like falling from the sky. It feels like floating in the air of emotion. When people fall in love with each other, it brings an intimate love for one another. The two hearts combine in one to form an emotional bond deeper than the sun. Having each other's hearts from the start till they fall apart. Love brings happiness to the world, warming our hearts and respect to all mankind. You can fall from the side. I mean, excuse me, you can fall from the sky. You can fall to the sea. But the best way to fall is in love. And even though, you know, maybe less people might believe in it than they did before, love is still the way to go. Love is what we need in our lives. Let's forget about hate. You know, maybe those neo-Nazis and those foreign assholes need to kind of learn that because, boy, they certainly not believe in it. And whatever they're teaching their kids, that's not going to be a future they're going to want to face. But, you know, let them figure that out. They're too brainwashed anyway. <laughs> I don't even think I could save them from from uh, So, hey, you know, not everybody can be saved. <laughs> Some people can have this for saving, looking for a woman. Well, we don't necessarily leave women to save us. Yeah, who am I kidding? Yes, we do. <laughs> a lot of times, a good, with a good relationship, you know, a good man or a good woman, vice versa, or both, definitely both makes a great relationship. And this is a short poem I wrote called Looking for a Woman. I never did anything to add to this because I figured that, you know, it made sense, short and sweet. So here it goes. Looking for a woman to be part of my soul who will make me completely whole, to love each and every day, beautiful in every way, to find love the way it should be. Soon I hope to find the right woman for me. Now, wouldn't that make a great Hallmark card or Valentine's Day card? Yeah. You know, when I finally decide to start selling cards, I should put that. <laughs> You know, like I said, because the reason why I didn't add, because, you know, it's short and sweet. Now for the next one I'm going to read to y'all. It's based on, you know, my new book, um, Journey to Finding Love. And the reason why I wrote this is because I have a friend I've known for a long time, and sometimes, you know, I, I like her name, but there are times where you just don't understand when a good man is not there and they're treating you like shit. You gotta leave them. You can't polish, like they tell you, you can't polish a turd, and you can't expect, you know, a Cadillac out of a limb or whatever the hell they call it. Or life can't be made out of lemons, whatever they used to say back then. Which inspired this poem called He Can Love You. By the way, she 
she's not with this guy anymore. She broke up with him a long time ago. But I wrote this back then because, you know, it frustrated me and I tried to tell her, leave him, leave him, leave him. He cheated on you. He doesn't love you. He only wants to be with you because you open your legs to him. But, you know, opening your legs or sex isn't everything. So here it goes. He can't love you. He can't love you. What part don't you understand? He can't love you because he can't be a man. He can't offer you no love or comfort. All he can do is freak you under the covers. He can't offer you no flowers. Maybe he can only offer you golden showers. He can't take you on the night of the town. Netflix and chill, that's what's going down. He has other women in tow. He may even have guys on the low. Faithfulness is not in his DNA. He ain't going to love you no way. He will break your heart and leave you confused. Your trust he will continue to abuse. Drain your time, your money, everything. Leave you barely hanging on a string. He's not worth it. Find someone else. Don't keep on fooling yourself. There's better men out there. He can't love you. He don't care. And by the way, if you're in a relationship with someone and you know it's going to be a waste of time, follow your heart. Leave that person. There is nothing wrong with following your heart because if you know you're in a bad situation and you know your heart's going to continue that way, there's no point of staying. You know, there's plenty. Like my mom taught me and, you know, when I was young, I used to be stubborn. I never used to listen to her. There's plenty of fish in the sea. And you know what? In New York City, there's 8 million of them, right? So, you know, when there's one, there's always going to be another. And, you know, and not to say put your eggs in one basket either, but some guys do that too, or women, etc., etc. It's no fun having multiple partners after a while. Believe me, I tried. It's not worth it. You know, even Will Chamberlain himself will claim to have banged 20,000 women said it's better to have multiple sex with one woman than have sex with multiple women. He's right. <laughs> yeah, so you know, when you're in a relationship and you know it's going bad, leave. Leave, you know, your, your happiness and your sanity is very important to yourself. Not making everybody else happy, make yourself happy. Oh, making other people happy, you know, it's, it's okay also. But not if they don't do the same for you, you know, it works both ways. But you know what makes me happy? The power of me to smile. <laughs> And this is why I wrote this poem, The Power of Your Smile, because Nina is always happy, she's always smiling, she's always positive. Even in her darkest times, she always inspires me to be better also. And, you know, even when I'm sad, just seeing Nina smile makes me happy. And the power of your smile will go like this. The power of depression can make me sad, but the power of your smile keeps me from being down. The power of hate can make me mad, but the power of your smile turns my world around. There's no smile as powerful as yours, beautiful, vibrant, with love that endures. Sometimes when I feel like my world falls apart, the power of your smile melts my frozen heart. Now again, I know it could have been longer, but it's short and sweet to the point. And again, you know, going back to what I said earlier, we go through a lot of things in our lives, but when you have people you can surround yourself with that keeps a positive mind, it's always great to have that because in life these days, again, we don't have any positive influence. There's a lot of things that are not positive, even the rappers. What do they sing about? Hoes, bitches, this and that? And Cardi B, what is she all about? Money. Yeah, that's all she's about. <laughs> she's not doing anything positive for anybody. She's not even doing anything for a community. She probably already saying, fuck the Bronx, I got money, I don't need these clowns. Boy, j a great influence, isn't she? Can I say something? Yes. Well, Cardi B did, um, like a month ago, went to, I think, Bronx or Brooklyn, and she gave all the kids coats, like winter coats. Oh, good, something j would have never done. <laughs>
And you know, sometimes maybe women don't deserve a good man. I don't know. Maybe she didn't feel that she's too good for men. She's always breaking up with men. I think she's gonna. She's to me. I call the mom Elizabeth Taylor. But that doesn't mean she's like every woman in the world, because every woman deserves a good man, even Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> and this inspired me to write this poem called, well, I already said it, Every Woman. Because I feel like every woman deserves to be in a great relationship. They don't deserve to be hurt. They don't deserve to be in a relationship that goes sour. Because living in Bush, I saw a lot of women in bad relationships with derelict idiots, gangsters. Guys that didn't have any jobs, even Latin kings. And you know, strangely enough, well, that would be pretty bombed. Which is why I wrote this poem, and here it goes. Every woman deserves a man who calls them baby, kisses that person like she's that special lady, holds them like they never want to let them go, never lying or being cheated on with some hoe. He wipes her tears when she cries. It's the type who rides and dies, who makes them jealous of her because they wish them two was together. He is not scared to tell his friends how he feels about her. He will never feel like he has to doubt her. Makes her feel love, never pain or hurt. A man who loves her, every woman deserves. Yeah, because it kind of puzzles me when a man has a woman and he's afraid to tell him about her. You know, I know some women may not be the most attractive in the world, but if you love that person, who cares anyway? No, big whoop. What are people going to think? Or, oh yeah, my favorite thing with race. Oh, you have to date a Puerto Rican because you're Puerto Rican. You have to date black because you're black. And what does it matter anyway? Which brings to this. You know, I kind of really wish I could have um, had this one with me. Unfortunately, I don't. But probably for the next one, I will. It was a poem I wrote called, you know, interracial relationships, and I even forgot the title. I just put it on YouTube a few weeks ago, but let me show you, let me see what the title is called. So I hey, we did something a little different because James cooked dinner tonight and he cooked regular chicken thighs and corn. You probably seen that before but we did not record it we were just busy well James was busy uh cleaning out his closet and stuff like that purging because he purges every year I guess um yeah it's so like I do I get rid of my old clothes and you know I needed a lot of closet space so I got rid of a lot of my clothes and now my closet is free of junk <laughs> free of junk um yeah so you guys saw that he had his event yesterday at Haylard's the bar so you see those clips um, there of his content and James tell him what's happening in January well what's happening in January is I'm having an event it'll be at Monte Cristo bar 3290 36th Street I think it is or 34th Avenue in the story of Queens I gotta get the exact address it's gonna be a meet and greet from 2 to 4 on Martin Luther King Day the reason why I put it for that day is because the owner said it was better than putting on Saturday or Sunday and Martin Luther King Day, most people aren't working anyway, so you know, come to this free event, they're going to have drink specials and menu out also as well. And, you know, hopefully you guys can come by, you know, have a great time with drinking food and poetry. You know, it would be great to see you guys there. And also, if you want to read your own poems, hey, why not? Go ahead and do so. So, you know, one love here, you know, love is love, like Brother Earl says. So, you know, hope to see you guys there. Yeah, so he's having that event in, in January, and I think, do you have any others or no? It's just a no. January event, right? Oh, whatever. So that's what he's doing. So we're getting ready to go to his grandma's house. Well, when you see this, it will be tonight. We're probably going to be at his grandma's house tonight while you're seeing this. Um, oh, whatever. Um, and just enjoy. Um, and you might say it's safe with me cooking breakfast for her tomorrow. <laughs> really? What, what do you have for breakfast? Eggs and sausages <laughs> coming up. You bought sausages? I didn't see sausages. No, we're going to the buy fridge. them tomorrow. Oh, you're going to buy them tomorrow? Yeah. All right. And while you add it, can you buy a strawberry yogurt, Greek yogurt, some orange juice? And Damn, what else do I want? I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all that. It's okay. <laughs> a joke. I was joking. I was just like, oh, since you're going to go ahead and buy all that. Um, anyway, um, what was I going to say to you guys? So last night we watched the Christmas Chronicles on Netflix. Have you guys seen it? 
uh, with Kurt Russell. It was a cute movie because um, they had a list of like all the cheesy Netflix Christmas movies to watch or whatever. One of my favorites is The Princess Switch. And then last night we watched um, The Christmas Chronicles. Which is way better than that movie. You saw The Princess Switch? Yeah, we saw that together. Oh, I, I, I watched it twice. I watched it without him and then I watched it <laughs> with him. But yeah, James really liked The Christmas Chronicles. He was laughing, laughing more than I was. I think um, it's a really cute movie and it's kid-friendly. Um, Kurt Russell's in it. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt Russell and there's a cameo at the end. Surprise, surprise, we're not going to spoil spoil it. But it was a cute, whimsical movie. Um, they did a really good job with The Christmas Chronicles and I had asked people on Facebook what was a great Netflix movie and hands down everybody was saying um, The Christmas Chronicles and things like that. So yeah, so tomorrow we're going to go ahead and eat um, at James's family's house or whatever and then um, exchange the gifts there at um, their house and then Thank Christmas you. Day tentatively we're supposed to be going to see the tree i'm not sure yet in rockefeller center because my niece is supposed to come out but i don't know if she's still coming so i have to just um verify that with her and then decide but nonetheless it's all good it's the holidays we're sp spreading holiday cheer and um this week we're going away so stay tuned for next week which is was january 1st a monday or a tuesday january 1st is tuesday december 31st when are we coming back? We're coming back on January 1st? Yes, January 1st. So we're Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Wait, Monday? And then we're staying Monday too? Yes, Monday, and then we're... Tuesday, January 31st and 1st. So we're going to leave Tuesday? Yes. I didn't even realize that. I thought for some reason that we were coming back Monday, but... January we're... 1st is Tuesday. Okay, four so... Four days. So we're coming back on actually New Year's Day, which is great, but... So, and that, with that being said, Love and Dining may have to happen on, may have to be published on Tuesday. The reason being, James. Wait, for the new year? Listen, no, the reason being, because we're still going to be somewhere where there's not going to be good reception. Fingers crossed that we're going to have good reception, but if we don't have good reception, we may have to just post it on Tuesday because... The, the speeds may be low and it's going to, you know, how, when we tried to upload videos before when we were um, in a secluded area that it was very challenging. That's true. You know what I mean? Oh, we got to always have faith though. Yeah, you have to have faith. But James, I've been around a lot in a lot of internet places and a lot, sometimes the internet is just not going to work the way you want it to work, especially when you're in a place where um, it's secluded. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, we can try, but at the same time, you know, if so if you don't see a video from us on Monday, that just means that our internet, where we were, was not working, and we'll just release it on Tuesday. Um, yes, yes. No, no big deal, right? No. No big deal. Okay, so you guys want to know why I'm dressed up? Actually, shout out to Sebastian Camino, who watches the show all the time. Today is his birthday. Happy birthday, Sebastian. You're finally 18. Happy birthday, Sebastian. Yay. So we wanted to give a shout out to him for his birthday. And I'm dressed up. Actually, James and my friend, um, Anna, bought this for me last Christmas. She bought this necklace for me in this bracelet and um, some earrings, not these earrings, they're a little pearl studs. But the reason why I'm dressed up is because today I was doing a marketing video for my new program in January. I'm going to start marketing more because I was doing some systems behind the scenes. But anyway, I have a new program out and it's called Social Power. It's a high level, high touch, one-on-one -on -one coaching program where I'm helping smart and talented driven women entrepreneurs grow their business with content creation and social media so if you want to learn more about that just go over to my fan page uh, facebook.com forward slash nina online biz facebook.com forward slash nina online biz and check out the live that i did it's about a 42 minute live talking about my process, which is strategize, socialize, sell, if you want to get clients online, right? So go check out that video, see the process, and that's why I was dressed up, because I was doing this. I was going to turn that video into a Facebook advertising, but I cursed a little bit, and Facebook doesn't like when you curse, so I couldn't, like, really put that in the ad, James, really. Nice. All right? Um, so anyway, that's why I'm dressed up. Okay, so he looks so marvelous and beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So, and James, too. 
James. So we had chicken and corn. Um, this is like the first love and dining. We didn't really showcase any food, but you do get a special mm. of James what reading his called? poetry at his event and things like that. And just stay tuned yes. for next week's video. Um, it's going to be great. We're going to ring in the new year together. Um, so we want to wish you, James, a very Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year as well. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yes. <laughs> Are you tired, James? Yes, I am tired. You didn't talk a lot today. Yeah, I am a bit tired. Why are you tired? Did a lot of stuff today. Well, yeah, you went to the gym, you went Christmas shopping, you cleaned up your closet, you yes. cooked dinner, right? Yes. So, it's all good in the hood, yo. So anyway, with that being said... If you're looking for a cute Christmas movie, I recommend The Christmas Chronicles. If you want to be cheesy, watch The Princess Switch, right? So, James, do you have anything else to say? Not at all. Again, happy holidays. Happy holidays to you guys as well. And take care of yourselves. All right. See you soon. See you soon. Until next time, Nina Nicole and James Dean Who. Rivera. Signing out. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Uh -huh. Yeah.